Hello. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another set of exhibition replays for Zero K. I'm your host, Dominic or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match today between Fruity and Dan Warrior. First match for today, going to be starting a little bit. Okay. Dan Warrior going for cloaks. And Fruity going for rovers. And I should point out, this is a new patch. A brand new patch. Although none of the players using the cool new thing the new patch has, which is making it a lot easier to make terraform walls around mexes. Though on a map like this, I can't say I'm surprised. It's actually fairly easy to defend the base mexes. Also, the map itself is back in the matchmaking pool. These, as a rule, I always do matchmade matches. So if any match you see on my channel, unless someone has requested it, that match comes from playing matchmaking. So if you want to be on the channel too, and sometimes I might see you if you're playing matchmaking matches. I mean, just ask if you really want to, but. It might happen randomly, because playing matchmaking, and I see the match, and it looks like it might be good. And how Dan Warrior is being much more aggressive. I mean, at this point, Fruity, they're... They have two Masons out already. One of them's going to be caught out. Second one's fine. On the other hand, Dan Warrior has not really expanded much at all, so Fruity... Do have to worry about this one Mason, though, and do they have anything to deal with it? Ugh, no, there's Scorchers on the other side of the map entirely, so this Mason, unfortunately, getting killed out immediately, but then there is the second Mason right by the plus five. Let me say Freeze Commander now is to defend the Metal Extractors on their own. Losing one already should be enough for now, though admittedly still a thorn on their side. Dan Warrior's not done yet. Neither is that Lotus, but the Lotus done. That Glaive has no way out. Okay, there's one way out. Thanks for proving me wrong, Glaive. How rude of you to live like that. Still, though, it does mean Dan Weir cannot attack with impunity. So, Fruity can just go and expand and not have to worry about anything. Dan Warrior, on the other hand, they do have their Glaives up. They do have their expansions starting up. They don't really have anything planned for the plus five. I don't know. I mean, they should be aware of the... The numbers are not something that players see by default. They just see little iron bar, like little eye bars going across everywhere. but Or eye beams, rather, going across everywhere. But they would see five of them. So yeah, Fruity absolutely taking advantage of the fact that this map just has multiple different levels of metal extractor. Dan Warrior, on the other hand, just trying to kill. Being extremely aggressive with Glaives. I should know there hasn't really been a whole lot of changes to the way that glaives work in this patch. They they were basically unaffected. There was some changes to the way that bandits worked, but those aren't in the game right now. Like those aren't in this match, so that's not really relevant. It's just Dan Warrior wants to go for glaive contain and work from there. Can't say I totally blame them. It's just an interesting choice. Anyhow, Dan Warrior is looking like they are going to be struggling a little bit when it comes to their economy, though. Because again, Fruity has this mechs. They have, w with Overdrive on top of that, fair amount too. I mean, that mechs is like a third of their, a solid third of their economy is this single mechs. Not even joking, no exaggeration. That, those plus five mechs, when you Overdrive them, are worth a mint. I, I don't understand why Dan Warrior hasn't gone for them themselves, but as it stands, Dan Warrior's kind of leaving that on the table. We will see probably this conjurer eventually go and grab it. But yeah, this is... This is a little atypical, I will admit. Most 0k maps do have plus 2 mexes across the board. Occasionally they'll go for like plus 2.5 or plus 3, but it's still uniform. Frostburn is not one of those. There are a few that aren't like that. Terra is another one, which has been in the rotation before. There's not ones that come to mind, though. Most of them, indeed, are... I mean, there's... there are a couple that aren't really played anymore that were popular, but it was things like Adamantine Mountain, where there's only a few that were decent, and the rest are like plus one. But yeah, as a general rule, modern Zero K maps will have plus two as the baseline. But yeah, maps like Frostburn, if you go above plus two, that's fine. Fanware, however, does have that center mech, so to some degree they have a launch off point. I mean, it's almost separated. It's... It has some Lotuses coming up. They, I th think, want to make this a forward operating base to be able to launch their final assaults on Fruity. They just aren't really... 
really connecting it. I mean, Fruity could very easily send some units just to cut it off right here. So I don't really understand what the motivation for Dan Warrior's forward base here is going to be, ultimately. Especially as Fruity has now just taken another plus five. And it's well defended, too. I mean, two Reavers would probably put a stop to it, but still, that's one of two plus fives. And another one, for good measure. Why not? Dan Warrior's got three of the Super Mexes. Sorry, Fruity's three of the Super Mexes. Dan Warrior is lagging behind without them, and does at least manage to kill off one of the Masons. But at this point, how many Masons are there even? I mean... Oh, wait, I don't have that available to hit, because I don't have... Oh, actually, I do this. Two. Okay, actually, that was pretty valid then. Killing off one of three Masons is good. That that was a solid move. Unfortunately, Fruity is a little bit down when it comes to power production. But that's the thing. They're going to be able to deal with that soon enough. Now, I will point out, though, that Fruity has put all their eggs in the Supermax baskets. And Dan Weir has been consistently stronger when it comes to their military potential. Because, again... Two Reavers would probably get rid of this pretty handily. I mean, now with the Lotus Nest around it, not so much. But prior to that, yeah, the two Reavers would have likely done work. And Dan Wary, despite not having the Super Mechs, is doing just fine. They I mean, they have claimed the rest of the territory. Fruity has essentially forfeited the center of the map. And while the early game this looked dire for Dan Warrior, now Dan Warrior is actually kind of getting... They're kind of validating their choice of expansion pattern. Simply because right now, I mean, they do have actually a fair bit of room to maneuver. I mean, they can easily go to the center. They can move off from there with the Lotuses. They have an entire path, essentially, through the forward operating base. I mentioned before, I critiqued that they didn't, but now they do. So that criticism that criticism is no longer really valid. I mean, Danware is essentially just playing a very risky game of going forward and building out and then working in behind. But you now that risk is paying off. And they are... Basically one good raid away from knocking Fruity down. And not to mention Fruity. They are still accessing with that, but it may not be enough. The risk may soon now no longer pay off. Unfortunately, Dan Warrior's forces were just out of position. Fruity doing a fine job of assaulting here. Rippers are doing enough work, at least tanking. The fencers, of course, doing the main bulk of the work. Dan Warrior's commander, though, thankfully for them, upgraded to light particle beam, so they will be able to hold on to this. Fruity losing a lot of their forces in the process, though Dan Warrior's commander almost half health, but honestly, it's health at bar is half full as far as I'm concerned. I mean, just look at this. Fruity just sent everything they had at Dan Warrior's front base. Dan Warrior did lose a lot of the buildings. Their commander, however, is still alive. They have a solid defensive force right here, and they just got a conjure on top of that to help build and reclaim. Not to mention, 1.3 metal reclaim right in the middle of Dan Warrior's expansion. Same time, Dan Warrior going for what was likely their original plan. March into the eastern expansions. Take the Super Mechs. And they also have a Contra behind it. So yeah, the center control coming in here, it's... It was attempted to be punished. But by that point, it's just the timing was just off. Like, really, a, a minute earlier, or even 30 seconds earlier, it would have been successful. For, for Fruity, but as it stands, not so much. Dan Warrior, unfortunately, getting a little distracted here. Does get the Super Max at the cost of two Reavers, and the Knight wisely backing off, although they probably could deal with the Lotuses. The main target was destroyed. Fruity now behind economically for the first time this game, and Dan Warrior able to rebuild here and get the reclaim. A little short on power production, but that can be addressed pretty quickly. So with that, Dan Warrior is doing fine. I mean, the Caretaker's on top of that. Now any additional assault coming in there has to contend with Caretaker Repair. Unfortunately, Dan Warrior is accessing a fair bit and really does need to build more power. Fruity looks to be rebuilding the Metal Extractors on the Super Mechs, and that actually is going to be enough. Fruity... I mean, they got the energy for it. They have the production capacity on top of that. So right now, Dan Warrior is kind of hurting. And they do have the wind generators at the very least. Bottom's out at point four, but for the time being, it's not a bad way of at least getting rid of some of the excess metal. 
So once Danware gets these power plants up, they will be basically able to take full advantage of their entire base. Though, looking at it, I mean, Fruity has now taken all four Super Mexes. They have 20 metal per second just on the corners of the map, and that's... That is scary. I would say that Dan Warrior is somewhat surrounded. It's... I don't know. It's hard to say. Dan Warrior, on the other hand, on the one hand, has been surrounded on all sides. Like, Fruity has assets all on the corners of the map. On the other hand, Dan Warrior has a solid push area in the center, but now that's been broken, so really at this point, Fruity does have the advantage. Oh, Dan Warrior pointing on chat, they had not... They were not aware of the Super Mexes. Yeah, I... Honestly would recommend in general if you're not familiar with the map just double check super mexes do happen like uniform metal extractors are not the rule they are the common way of doing things but they aren't a rule there there's nothing in the game in like the definitions for the game or whatever that force the metal extractors to be a particular like a particular amount some spring games do this evolution rts being a good example where everything's 0.5 but 0k is not one of those metal extractors can have arbitrary metal values but yeah, that's looking like it might actually have been a problem. Fruity, they are taking out some of Dan Warrior's metal extractors. Now, thankfully for Dan Warrior, they, it takes a lot more work for Fruity to actually tear this down, just because there are more metal extractors. But unfortunately, Dan Warrior was relying a lot on the fact that they had I mean, the reclaim in the front. They had the, actually a lot of the reclaim. That was, that was their primary, that was the primary point of economy was reclaim. It's actually getting quite dire here. Iris coming in, trying to get in close before managing to actually take out this force, but unfortunately that's looking unlikely. At the same time, Sling's going over the forward. They're helping out, they're doing some work, but it's just one Reaver's the only thing keeping them alive. Fortunately, the three Slings were lost as part of a counterattack. At the same time, though, Dan, we're just gradually losing control of the map. I mean, having lost the sword expansions, more importantly, having lost the reclaim fields, that puts them massively in the back foot. But yeah, so just in general, I mean, if you're... Again, the default thing, which I'll show after... Well, I'll try to remember to show afterwards how it looks by default. I prefer showing the numbers because I think that looks clearer on stream. In large part because of image compression issues. And also, I personally find it clearer. But... I'm also, like, a bit of a stickler for exactly how much metal is there, which, you know, that's probably not super relevant. Like, is it two or is it more than two? Or is it less than two? Which occasionally it is, but I don't think any of the matchmaking... None of the matchmaking maps do that. Older maps did, none of the newer ones do, as I mentioned earlier. But yeah, so when you look at the numbers, you see, oh, it's plus five, plus two, one, five, plus two. There's also a bit of an effect on the metal extractor when you're zoomed out. You see the circle is thicker... The circle thickness depends on the amount of metal the metal extractor provides. So, especially for plus 5, for instance, it gets really thick when you zoom out. Compared to 2, 2.5, whatever. Anyway, two point, speaking of the 2.5, that one right next to Fruity's base being taken out. I mean, Fruity, at this point, they still have that strong economy because it is on the corners and that is well enough defended that Dan Warrior doesn't see the point of going for it. Instead, going straight for the main base. An unorthodox move, but it may work out. Although it's a bit of a suicide mission, essentially it's a base trade at this point, or a base race at this point. Fruity with a phantom to at least get rid of some of the forces coming in there. Or sorry, Dan with a phantom to get rid of some of the forces coming in from Fruity, but Fruity... I mean, they're having to deal with the fact that half these forces are cloaked thanks to the Iris. Fencers are going down, the Lotus is trying to help, but they're distracted by the Glaives. Knight coming in there, nicely getting rid of the Iris. Fortunately for them, the the virus has been killed, but they're close enough. They can take out the caretakers. They probably won't be able to take out the factory before it's all over. But taking out the caretakers is still significant. That massively reduces how much Fruity can do with the economy they have, forcing them into excess. And with the base race being won basically by Danware, they lost two caretakers of their own. But, I mean, they are not in as dire a situation when it comes to their economy. Okay, that sounds weird to say. They, they, they actually are in a dire situation when it comes to their economy, but the dire situation is that they just don't have enough metal income. And actually, also, their commander is pretty much doomed. Badger's just hammering at it. It's its days are numbered, unfortunately, unless something comes over to save it, which one glaive could maybe do the trick. You know, one glaive like the one right here, for instance. But it looks like it may have still have escaped. Oh no! Why did you attack? No, that's why you have return fire! Or just hold fire! 
Oh, Dan Warrior's Commander surviving from having upgraded the cloak module, but it's still such a close run thing. I mean, one well placed badger shot or intelligent scorcher move, and that's going to be it. But no, Dan Warrior seems to have saved their commander. They've lost the center, though. Fruity basically taking the entirety of the map. So I would say that ultimately worked out. Fruity had surrounded Dan Warrior. It was hard to say, but no, Dan Warrior's center position simply wasn't strong enough to handle being attacked from all sides by Fruity's stronger economy. And now Dan Warrior trying to work with what they have. I mean, trying to get some metal, some caretakers up, use what they have, use the reclaim to rebuild. I mean, thankfully for them, Fruity has to spend about a minute or two just rebuilding all the caretakers that they lost. So Dan Warrior has a little bit of time to work with, but it's not much, and they are still excessing. Phantom goes down. Dan Warrior's commander, pretty much the only thing left to deal with this, and if it gets in a fight, it's dead. And now Dan Warrior throws in the towel, realizing there's no way of getting back from this, and that is that. I will say, though, Dan Warrior actually did have a chance. Like, when they had the center of the map, they had all these metal extractors, they were on par with Fruity. I mean, the reclaim did help, for sure, but they were pretty well on par with Fruity. I think the only thing that was missing was they didn't have overdrive. And honestly, it'd be kind of funny. If they had done overdrive, they wouldn't have gotten any of the excess they had. Not that it was much, but still, they were they were often falling behind for energy income, so they couldn't use their metal as quickly as they produced it. Which means that they basically, they were falling behind, especially near the end, just because they they couldn't build fast enough, because they couldn't use the, the resources they had. But if they had built the power, they would have gotten the overdrive. And if they got the overdrive, then they would have been in great position. Because they would have been in the same position as Fruity, but they would have had the safety of having been spread out a little bit. Because the problem with Fruity's approach is, you know, a few slings come in and they take it out. Or a few reavers come in, and, like, unless you spend a massive amount of metal trying to build up lotus nests, or stingers, or other powerful defenses, you're going to lose that very quickly. It's a single point of failure. Whereas Dan Warrior's approach, while a little bit harder to set up, could theoretically have been much more solid, just because it would have, you know, we would have had to punch through every single one of these metal extractors and the defenses around it, but there weren't very many defenses around them. So Fruity just could hit the ones in between the front lines and the main base, and as a result, completely cut off the front lines from any additional defenses, or any additional reinforcements safely able to come through. Oh, the, oh, apparently... Oh, I should have looked at that. Apparently the radar wasn't spotting the metal extractors, which is odd. Because... Yeah, that's weird. I mean, if you look here, this is the metal extractor here, and it's... And that's the... Ra no, that's the Lotus. I'm not sure where the radar was for Fruity. But, yeah, if you look, if you look at that, it's flat. Oh, unless they had radar in the main... Base. Hang on. No, that wouldn't have been quite large, long enough. They would have had a radar here, which would have been high. Yeah, that should have been higher. Like, here they have been radar shadow. Like, if you had a radar here, there'd be radar shadow over here, but not over here. Weird. Okay, that's that is bizarre. Something to look into. So yeah, worth noting. Apparently, Dan Warrior had trouble getting the radar to actually show them what was going on in the size of the map. Despite the size of the map being lower than the center. And thus, not in radar shadow. Good to know. Anyhow, that was that. We'll have another match next up. Which is going to be a map... Okay, this is... Apologies if I get the names wrong. Luchen Chans Versus... Esco Bombardo. Okay, that's not that hard. The Chen Chans versus Esco Bombardo on on Doom Patrol Redux. So yeah, if you like that map, great. If you like hovers, it's a good map. If you don't like hovers, it's probably not the map for you. Anyway, that's gonna be that. So we'll be back with oh. I'm um, wow. Sorry, Lu Chen Chen's gonna have to shorten your name. Be back in just a minute. <laughs>